This is Joe Biden, the resident of the United States. As you well know, Biden tells stories about his family at nearly every single opportunity. But how much of it is real? Well, probably not a whole lot. My dad was a well-read guy. His greatest regret, he never went to college. My dad was a, was a really fine man, and he was a well-read. He was, never got to go to college. My dad was a well-read, high school-educated guy whose great regret was he never got to go to school. My dad is a hard-working guy, a real gentleman, a decent man. He never got a college degree. He never got to go to college. It was a great regret he had. So Joe Biden claims that his father, Joseph R. Biden Sr., didn't get to go to college. But there's only one problem with this story. Joe Biden's father did in fact go to college. According to the 1940 census, under highest grade of school completed, Joseph Biden Sr. is marked C1, i.e. one year of college. Furthermore, in a 1941 article in the Scranton Tribune regarding his marriage to Catherine Finnegan, Joseph R. Biden Sr. attended the prestigious John Hopkins University. My dad was a well-read man and his greatest regret was he never got to go to college. No, Joe, your dad was a college dropout. And it appears that he left college to work alongside his father, who was an executive at the American Oil Company, because nepotism. Which means that the only thing stopping Joe Biden Sr. from finishing college was Joe Biden Sr.'s life choices. And speaking of Joe Biden's grandfather, my grandpa, who I never met, he died in the same hospital I was born in two weeks before I was born. <laughs> no, liar. Joseph H. Biden passed away in a hospital in Baltimore, Maryland in September 1941. Joseph R. Biden Jr. was born November 1942, one year and two months later in a hospital in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And no, Biden is not referring to Grandpa Finnegan because he didn't pass away until 1957. And by the way, my grandpa Biden who died very young. He was died in the hospital I was born in six days before I was there, before I was born. So from a political perspective, what does Joe Biden think he's gaining by lying about when and where his grandfather died? It makes no sense. But in the cosmic scheme of things, that's small potatoes. Because as it turns out, Joe Biden Jr lies about everything, literally everything. You know, I remember, uh, you know, I, as I said, my, my family, I was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. When Cole died when I was in third grade, we had to move. Look, folks, uh, I come from uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, where I was raised. The reason I got to Delaware is Cole died. My dad was not in the coal mines, he was in sales, but the whole economy died. Joe Biden wants you to believe that he's from middle-class Scranton and that he was there since the day he was born until the town died and then he had to move to Delaware. However, you'll be shocked to learn that he's not telling you the entire story. First of all, Joe Biden Jr. was born in Scranton, but the Biden family was living in Baltimore, Maryland, where Joe Biden Sr. was working at Amico. And according to the book, Joe Biden, A Life of Trial and Redemption by Jules Whitcover, Joe Sr. and his cousin, Bill Sheen Jr. became close friends. And Bill Sr. set the two young men up in the booming wartime family business, the Sheen Armor Company. And in an article by Adam Enthaus that appeared in The New Yorker, by August 1942, Joe Biden Sr.'s salary was $100 a week. By the way, adjusted for inflation, that's almost $1,900 a week. In Newton, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston, they bought a Dutch colonial house, the grandest home they'd ever own. They also splurged on fur coats and fine china. The family was now ensconced in a four-bedroom Dutch colonial in a Boston suburb with plenty of money and perks to fly back to Scranton to visit the Finnegans whenever they wanted. Joe Sr. was as generous to his family and friends as his benefactor was to him as long as the money flowed. So thanks to Uncle Bill, Joe Biden Sr. was living it up. You know, just like your everyday average middle class family. But the good times did not last. Uh-oh! After the war, Joe's cousin Bill Jr. lost his bearings in high living, i.e. 
He was a notorious drunk, and Joe Sr. had to rely on his own devices. First, he planned with an old friend to open a furniture store until the friend absconded with much of the seed money. Oh, what a shame. Undeterred, he hitched up with Bill Jr. in a crop dusting enterprise over Long Island and upstate New York farm country, with the family moving from Boston to Garden City. But that venture failed too, with Bill Jr. running out on him. Jean, wary of warning her husband about him, decided to return to Scranton with Joey and Valerie in 1948. So apparently, the Biden household was so unstable that his wife felt the need to pack up the kids and run back to her parents' house in Scranton. And it turns out that Joe Biden Sr. may have been a philanderer. According to The New Yorker, documents link Biden Sr. to an excursion on his cousin's 39-foot yacht, which later became the subject of an insurance fraud case. During his deposition, Sheen Jr. was asked to confirm that Biden Sr. and two unmarried women were with him on the boat, and his lawyer advised him not to answer. Hmm, two married men cruising around on a yacht with two single women? <laughs> Nothing to see here, guys. A real gentleman, a decent man. Then to make matters worse, Bill Sr., who had helped to underwrite the crop dusting enterprise, bailed out. It was back to Scranton for Joe Sr. Nove do nove Shopee Super Shopping Day. No dia nove de setembro, aproveite. So within two years and several failed business ventures, which included co-owning a failed airport, Joe Biden Sr. was broke and forced to move back to Scranton and stay with his wife's parents. Oof. Look, folks. Uh, I come from uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, where I was raised. The reason I got to Delaware is coal died. My dad was not in the coal mines, he was in sales. But the whole economy died. When, when coal died in Scranton, there weren't any jobs. When we moved from Scranton, when coal died in Scranton, everything died in Scranton. So, did the whole economy die in Scranton? <laughs> not according to the New York Times. Though Scranton was sharing in the post-war economic boom, Joe Sr. had trouble finding steady work, and nothing had measured up to his previous success. For a time, he commuted to Wilmington to clean boilers for a heating and cooling company. In 1953, he moved the family there. So Joe Biden wants you to believe that it's Scranton's fault that his dad couldn't find work, and that it's Scranton's fault that his family had to move, because, you know, Scranton died. But consider that the only reasons the Bidens lived in Scranton in the first place was because his dad, Joe Biden Sr., was a failure who was forced to move in with his in-laws. And maybe had he saved his money instead of, oh, I don't know, improperly investing it and throwing it all away on fur coats and fast cars and frivolous trips back and forth to Scranton. I mean, it's his own fault that he was back in Scranton in the first place. Plus, the Biden family was living rent-free at the Finnegan household for five years. Anyway, in 1953, the Biden family moved to Claymont, Delaware, and lived in an apartment building for one year that was similar to what this is. But then, one year later, they moved into this house in Arden, and then a year later, this house in Mayfield. I grew up in a neighborhood called Claymont, Delaware, when we moved from Scranton when Cole died. Again, he only lived there for one year. He didn't grow up there. But Claymont, Delaware is part of the Biden mythos, so he's not going to start telling the truth now. But I, 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 I was raised with a middle class family. We weren't poor. We lived in a three bedroom house with four kids and a grandpa, a split level home, and. Uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa! His grandfather lived with the Bidens in Delaware. Really? Now, the princess, my sister, had her own bedroom, <laughs> as she should have. But the three boys, were, there, four, there were two sets of bunks in the other room. So if you're keeping track, there were three bedrooms. One was Joe's sister's room, one was the boy's room, and one was the parents' room. Then where did Biden's grandpa stay? In the attic? Was he in the fourth bed in the boys' room? Nope, because according to his obituary, 
When Grandpa Finnegan died in 1957, he resided at 2446 North Washington Avenue in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He was not living in Delaware. And why would he? He had his own house. Had four kids and a grandpa living with us. Furthermore, in his book, Promises to Keep, Joe Biden writes, My mom's brother, Edward Blewett Boo Boo Finnegan, came to visit us in Wilmington just after Grandpa Finnegan died in 1956, and he stayed for 17 years. Of course, Biden got the year wrong that Grandpa Finnegan died, but whatever. Blewett was a traveling salesman for Serta, the mattress company. But when he'd come off the road, he bunked in Mayfield with me and my brothers. We lived in a split-level home, three bedrooms, four kids, mom and dad and a grandpa who lived with us. Three-bedroom house with four kids and, and uh, a grandpa living with us, a split-level home. So Biden is A, confusing his uncle with his grandfather, or B, he's saying grandpa because he thinks it sounds better in the story. Probably the latter, but you be the judge. Now, speaking of the Biden home in Mayfield, Delaware, I remember one night, true story, one night my dad, I could feel like the, he was rolling in bed because the headboard was hit the side of the, the, wa the wall. What? And the walls were thin. <laughs> and you could hear, I remember one day, it's a true story, one day, I could, I could, one night I hear my dad was really restless getting up and down. You gotta love that every time Joe Biden's about to spew some bullshit, that he has to preface it with something like, true story or not a joke. I remember one night, this is God's truth, I remember one night, I guess I was a sophomore or junior in high school, and here my the headboard of my dad's bed, I could tell my dad was restless in the next room. Oh yeah, Joe Biden's dad was restless all right, and he had a hunger that only Joe Biden's mother could fulfill. <laughs> we could always tell when things were going rough. You could hear my dad when he was restless, and hear the headboard move. So Joe Biden's dad liked to play rough in the bedroom. Got it. Also, <clears throat> next morning I get up and ask my mom, I said, what's the matter with dad? Let me guess. She said, oh, it's nothing. It happens to every guy. It's not a big deal. He said her company just said they're not going to pay insurance anymore. Health insurance. Wait, what? And, my, and I next morning asked my, I said, God, the truth, asked my mom. I said, I was in, I think, a junior in high school. So what's the matter with, with dad? He said, he just, we just lost our insurance. His business is no longer going to cover insurance for the employees. Oh, I see. That sound wasn't his parents getting busy. It was the sound of Joe's dad worried about health insurance. Yeah, sure. But to be fair, I know when I'm stressed out about money and my family's financial circumstances, I too start rolling around violently in bed. I could tell my dad was restless. I could hear him. Now, if Joe's story is true, and press X for doubt. I think his mom's response was more like, oh, you heard that, huh? Well, he's worried about health insurance, son. I mean, seriously, what parent sits their child down and tells them about their financial struggles, especially in the 1950s? Plus, we're expected to believe that little Joey Biden understood the concept of health insurance? Hell, he doesn't even understand it in his 80s. And Biden describes the dad was restless about health insurance story like it was his road to Damascus moment. Yet when it comes to Joe Biden's books, which I'm sure he wrote completely on his own, there's no mention of the event taking place. Why is that? Because it never happened. I know you're shocked. Nice middle class home, three bedroom home, four kids and a grandpa. And we were happy. I sometimes look back and wonder how my parents did it with those very thin walls. <laughs> but. Yuck. Anyway, that's it for now. Follow me on X at Don't Walk Run. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for tuning in. And I hope to see you next time. If there is next time. You know you're in a woke cult if. 36. You will scream January 6th while setting fire to someone's business. Looney leftist, anyone who thinks the government can be overthrown by a militia doesn't know how tanks and jets work. Me, but you claim the government was almost overthrown on January 6th by unarmed people walking in a building.
United Nations, in his first speech to the United Nations General Assembly, Trump told the global body in September, I put America first and you should do the same with your nations. In the speech, he also explicitly denounced socialism and communism, pointing to Venezuela as an example of what happens when socialism is successfully implemented.